Hey everyone, Jason from Make Care here with another Carvera how-to. And in this one, we're looking at how to set up and use the Carvera Desktop CNC with the Fusion 360 CAM program. The Carvera Desktop CNC is compatible with a wide range of CAM programs in addition to Fusion 360. You can find tutorials and guides for all of these programs on the Make Care Wiki site and official YouTube channel. In order to manufacture a part with the Carvera using Fusion 360, we first need to import the Carvera's profiles and tools into the Fusion 360 machine libraries. You can download these profiles on the Makera website or on the Makera wiki page under software. After downloading and unzipping the Carvera profile folder, launch Fusion 360 and switch to the manufacturing window. Open the machine library and go to your list of local machines. Then click the import button. You should be able to import profiles for both the Carvera 3-axis and Carvera 4-axis if you equip your Carvera with the optional 4th-axis module. So now that we've imported the Carvera's profiles, we can prepare designs to be manufactured for the Carvera using Fusion 360. But we can also import the tool libraries for the bits that come with the Carvera CNC. In Fusion 360, open the Tool Library menu. Right-click Local and select Import Libraries. You can select the tool libraries for the example tools using the Carvera example guidebook, the spare tools that also come with the Carvera CNC, and the PCB tools that are included with the optional PCB fabrication pack. You can use the Fusion 360 tool library to add more tools, modify tools, or renumber tools to correspond with the Carvera's automatic tool changer. And that's all it takes to add the Carvera to Fusion 360 so we can use it to prepare designs to be manufactured on our Carvera CNC. But I'm now going to walk you through the fundamentals of preparing a design to be manufactured on the Carvera with Fusion 360 using the libraries we've just imported. To make something with the Carvera, you first need a 2D or 3D design file made in computer-aided design software. For this example, I will be manufacturing this Makera keychain out of aluminum. You can download the files for this design from the knowledge sharing page on the Makera wiki site. For Fusion 360, you can download the step file provided on this page and open it directly in the program. So whenever we implement a project using a CNC machine like the Carvera, it's important to understand this is a subtractive manufacturing process, meaning we're actually going to insert a piece of stock and remove material in order to create our final product. Because of this, we typically want to identify the material or stock as well as the tool bits we have available before diving into our project. For this keychain example, I will be using a piece of aluminum that is 100 by 100 by 5 millimeters from the examples material kit included with every Carvera. There are also a number of bits that come with the Carvera CNC which we can use for working with metal and that we will be using in this example project. We will be using the 0.2 millimeter 30 degree V bit, the 12 millimeter single flute end mill, and the 2 millimeter drill bit from the examples pack. So now that we know what material and bits we have available, let's dive into preparing this design to be manufactured using Fusion 360. In Fusion 360's manufacturing space, we want to make sure that we're working in millimeters regardless of what unit our part was actually designed in. After checking our units, we can go ahead and click Setup to create a new setup for this CNC project. You want to make sure that you select the Carvera's 3-axis profile for this project, and you can of course import the profile from our website if needed and if you have not already done so. The operation is milling for this machine, and the next thing we need to do is check our work coordinate system. We need to make sure that the work coordinate system corresponds with the system used on the Carvera, where Z is up, Y is towards the back, and X is towards the right-hand side. You also typically want to adjust your origin system to match where the origin system is for the Carvera, which can be done by selecting a stock box point, then selecting box point as your stock point, and clicking on the top left corner of your stock. This is where the origin is set up by default for our probing sequence for the Carvera. You also need to make sure that your model is selected by clicking on the body of your part, and then we can move into adjusting the stock. Though this is not required, I typically like to adjust the stock to match the stock that I'm using for our projects. So I'm going to change it from being a relative box size to a fixed box size, and I'm going to adjust my stock to correspond to the piece of aluminum that I'm using that's 100 millimeters in the X dimension, 100 millimeters in the Y dimension, and 5 millimeters in the Z dimension. You can also adjust the position of your part in your stock by changing your model position offsets. So I can create an offset that's 10 millimeters from the left side and an offset that's 10 millimeters from the front side to position my part as I'd like it to be. However, it's important to note that these offsets and origin positions can always be adjusted later in the Carvera controller during manufacturing. 
Once you've adjusted your setup, you want to click OK, and just note that you can always go back into your setup to make any changes by double-clicking on the setup on your browser, or by right-clicking the setup and clicking Edit. So looking at this part, there are three toolpaths that we need to perform in order to manufacture it. We typically align our toolpaths so we go from least detail to most detail, and we often typically save the outer edge cut for last. The first toolpath we will do is drilling the hole at the top of the part. In Fusion, select Drill from the Drilling menu. We can then select our tool. The 2mm bit that comes with the Carvera can be found in the Spare Tools library that we imported earlier. We want to ensure this bit is assigned to slot 6 as it will be loaded in the Carvera, which can be assigned using the Renumbering button in the Tool library. After selecting the tool, we can ensure that the aluminum copper PCB profile is selected, and the default feeds and speeds should be fine for this job. In the Geometry tab, we want to select the whole face at the top of the part before switching to the Heights tab. While it's not required, I always like setting my heights based on the model rather than the stock. This should prevent the Carvera from machining too high or too low, even if my stock parameters are incorrect. From the bottom, we can choose to drill through the part and even add an offset. I typically add an offset of negative 0.5 millimeters below my part whenever I want to machine all the way through the stock. And this is okay to do as long as you use a piece of wasteboard under your stock, which we'll talk about later in this tutorial. Whenever we're drilling through a dense material like aluminum, we want to create a PEC drilling toolpath. Select Deep Drilling Full Retract from the Cycle menu. This will fully retract the drill bit after drilling a depth of 0.2 millimeters to allow for chip evacuation. After pressing OK, your parameters will be saved. We can then simulate this toolpath from the Actions menu to preview it and confirm that this looks as it should. The next toolpath we're going to create is the Makera logo on the face of this part. Typically, this is called a pocket, and you would usually use a 2D pocket function to machine a simple design like this. However, as the pockets in this example part are rather small and will be machined using a V-bit, this scenario can be more effectively machined using a 3D pocket clearing operation in Fusion 360. After creating a 3D pocket clearing operation, select the 0.2 millimeter V-bit for engraving from the examples tools which should be set as tool number two. We want to select the aluminum preset and the default feeds and speeds should be fine for this project. Under geometry, we want to select the pockets of the logo design. I can choose to select all pockets on the same plane as each pocket in the design are at the same depth. We can turn rest machining off as we will be machining these pockets with just one tool. For my heights, I will again set this based on my model, and the bottom height will be set as a selection, which is the bottom face of one of my pockets. In the Passes tab, most of the default parameters should be fine for this example. Note the parameter for maximum roughing step down set to 0.2 millimeters. This sets how much material is removed for each pass as the tool bit gradually increases its depth during the machining process. I don't need to enable stock to leave, but I do want to enable feed optimization to optimize my toolpath and reduce bit wear. No other settings should need to be adjusted for this example. After pressing OK and saving our settings, we can simulate this toolpath from the Actions menu to verify that it looks correct. Note the multiple passes at multiple depths to machine this part. And the last toolpath is the outer perimeter which will separate the part from our stock. We can create a 2D contour toolpath for this operation and we want to select the 12 millimeter single flute end mill from the example tool library which should already be assigned to tool number four. We want to choose the aluminum preset and the default setting should be fine for this example. Under geometry, we can use a chain selection to select the bottom edge of our part. We then need to enable tabs. Tabs are used to hold the part within machining so that way it doesn't eject during the machining process. Fusion 360 will automatically generate tabs by either a distance or number, but I typically set the number to be zero and manually place tabs. Two tabs should work well for this example, and I also like to increase the tab height to 1.5 or 2 millimeters. Under heights, I will again set the heights based on my model, and I will add a negative 0.5 millimeter offset from the bottom to cut fully through the stock. This is useful if there are discrepancies through throughout the thickness of your stock, but the Carvera's automatic leveling system can also be used to accommodate this. We need to enable multiple depths so this toolpath will be completed in multiple passes. I typically enable even step downs to control the height for each step down, as well as finish only at final, which saves the finishing pass until the very end, reducing the overall machine time. Lastly, enable feed optimization and press OK to simulate and preview this toolpath from the Actions menu. Once everything looks good, we can generate a G-code file using the post-processing window. Ensure the Carvera 3-axis profile is enabled 
labeled, as well as that your units are set for millimeters. We also want to check the operations tab to ensure each toolpath is selected unless you intentionally want to skip some of the toolpaths you've created. You can also rename the file before pressing post to save this to a set location on your computer. So now that we've created our G-code file using Fusion 360 Cam, we can set up the Carvera to begin manufacturing. We can secure the aluminum stock over a piece of wasteboard so it's aligned with Anchor Point 1. I recommend that you use at least two top clamps in addition to the machine screws in order to ensure that your stock is secured effectively. We also want to verify that our bits are located in the correct positions which correspond to the toolpaths created in Fusion 360. The 30 degree 0.2 millimeter V bit should be loaded in tool slot 2. The 12 millimeter single flute end mill should be loaded in tool slot 4 and the 2mm drill bit should be located in tool slot 6. Ensure that every bit has a bit collar installed so it may be loaded in the Carvera's automatic tool changer. And while it isn't required, we typically don't use the dust shoe and vacuum system when we're machining metal. Instead, you can raise and lock the bracket to its highest position, remove the dust shoe, and use the air assist nozzle for chip evacuation and cooling. So now that the Carvera is set up, we can move into the Carvera controller app to actually take our G-code file, prepare it, and send it to this machine. Launch the Carvera controller app and upload the G-code file created in Fusion 360 using the files menu. After uploading your file to the Carvera, select it and open it to preview your design. From the configure and run window, we can adjust the work origin offsets as needed to ensure that the part is within the stock and avoiding collisions with any clamps or fixtures. Scan margin should be enabled, which will trace the perimeter of your part, and auto Z probe should be enabled, which will measure the height of the stock based on the position set. You can also use auto leveling, which will ensure that the top surface is machined evenly despite any possible variations in the stock thickness. In this example, I will use a clearance height of two with three X and Y points as there is little flex in my stock and this part is rather small. Once your parameters are set, click run to start manufacturing. The runtime for this part will be about 45 minutes. The Carvera will start by selecting the wireless probe to trace the outer perimeter of your design using a laser pointer before moving into measuring the height of your stock across multiple points based on the settings from the controller. The Carvera will then automatically select tool number six in order to perform the drilling operation using the PEC drilling toolpath we created earlier. Next, the Carvera will switch to our V-bit in tool two to engrave the logo design. Multiple passes will be created as the Carvera machines each part of the design gradually based on the parameters set earlier. Lastly, the Carvera will switch to tool four to select the 12 millimeter end mill before machining the perimeter of our model. Note that the tool lifts as it cuts deeper in order to create the tabs. Once finished, we can vacuum excess material and remove our part from the machine. You can use the handsaw and sanding block included with the example material kit in order to cut the tabs off of the part and release it from the stock. And that's all there is to it. The Carvera CNC is compatible with a wide range of materials, bits, and accessories in order to enable you to bring your designs to life with greater ease. And thanks to its compatibility with multiple CAM programs, the automatic tool changer, and other built-in safety and calibration features, this has never been easier than with the Carvera desktop CNC. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for future how-tos, guides, and tutorials on the MakeHara channel.